saw a few people asked uh, why we moved from Estacada. And uh, I'm sorry if I didn't address this sooner, so I wanted to make a quick video and talk about it. There is a variety of reasons why we left. And the main one, which is the one that we just couldn't figure out how to solve, is we really just outgrew it. I did so much so quickly, and I don't really regret that because I have the animals that I have now because of that. But we did outgrow it um, in just a year and a half. You know, the house was only so big, we couldn't really get any more dogs. So I started to feel like if I got more dogs, although it was always cute with the videos, you know, even watching the videos sometimes, I'm like, man, there's not really, with all the dogs in the house, with all 30 at the time in the house at once, there really wasn't much room for anything else, anyone else or any other dogs. And I just wanted to bring in more animals. I wanna bring in more cats, more parrots eventually, more dogs, of course, and I just really felt like if I kept getting more animals and stayed there, it was going to be, I don't like to say uh, hoarding, because I know that's kind of a more of a, uh, um, how would you, I'm trying to think of the polite way to say it, but usually when people are severe hoarders, uh, there's usually some other, you know, pretty unfortunate underlying issues. And then working in animal rescue, and I'm sure if you're familiar with animal rescue, I can't tell you how many dogs and cats and rabbits and a variety of animals wind up at the shelters because of hoarding situations. So of course, you know, I'd like to be somewhat of a role model in the animal rescue community as, as good as I can be. And uh, having so many animals in a small house or a smaller environment, I just didn't think really represented the Asher house in the best way. And that includes farm animals. You know, my team, you know, kind of made me promise that I wouldn't get more cows, more pigs, more goats. And for me, I was like, what, what was the point of getting a sanctuary? So it was really hard for me to digest that. And there really wasn't a way, a, a solution. The solution was to, to go bigger, to get a, a bigger place. So we went from 25 acres to 240 acres. And I promise I'm gonna give you guys a tour uh, pretty soon. So that's the first reason. We, we, we really just outgrew it we were really secluded. Like we were too secluded to where I didn't feel like it was all that safe for the animals. If there was an emergency, which there was sometimes and not that being closer would have made a difference, but you never really know, you know, just, just to get to not just the local market for this and that, but to get to like an actual grocery store was about 30 minutes. Uh, the, our veterinarian was over an hour away to hire someone to, to hire anyone to an electrician a plumber to have a vet come out anything it would always take forever it would take so long to get the help that we needed to get employees to help us it was just a a, a mission of its own to get people to come to the sanctuary to, to help us we were really out in the middle of nowhere it was out there enough to where it was really difficult to get the help and the support that we needed, especially in a timely matter. Um, and that, that started to become a big issue. You know, the, the lack of service, we had no service. We had awful Wi-Fi. I, I could never do uh, an Instagram live from my house. I always had to drive into town, which would always take me 15, 20 minutes. The other reason is, is that I, I, I started, you know, I don't know how to say it um, eloquently, but the truth is, is that I started to feel a lot of pain there. I know I'm gonna experience a lot of loss here as well, uh, and anywhere we go, and when you're in animal rescue, um, you're gonna experience a lot of loss, but it, it was really hard for me um, with losing Sammy, and stubs and 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 really I, I the truth is all of them excuse me it was it was really hard for me especially in a smaller house like just having so many visuals you know this is where this dog passed away this is where this animal passed away and it was just it was really hard for me and uh i worked really hard on kind of trying to shift my mindset but i'm such a visual person and it it just I just found myself often being quite sad. And I just want to reiterate, the main reason um, I decided for us to move was, was really the space. 
So if we would have had the space, I think I, I, I would have eventually overcome, overcame the second issue, which was the pain that I felt. You know, that's something that we have to work on and, and work through, um, which I'm still doing. You know, I'm new place, still dealing with that pain. And um, I, I was just in Estacada to visit the farm animals and, you know, that pain came back. But, you know, it's really important to do your best if you can, if you are able to change your environment, if there's a certain environment that's triggering some sort of pain for you, if, if you have the ability to change it, you know, luckily I didn't have anything really keeping me there except for the animals. And I'm a big believer in if you, if your gut is telling you to do something and it's not just your gut, but it's also your heart and your instincts are telling you to do something and you have nothing to lose, uh, some people may think that I had everything to lose. You know, my team was very, was they were quite cautious about this this move, but I felt in my core that this was the right decision for not just me, but for the animals. And um, I was right, you know, I'm really, I'm lucky that I, I was right about that. But that's, that's that. So there was really a long list of things, but the, the biggest reason why I wanted to move, the biggest reason, was the space. Um, if there was, if everything else was perfect, if we were right by everything that we needed, if um, I didn't have to deal with some, frankly, some traumatic events that happened, I, I, I think that I still would have decided to move solely because I think it was, I know it was too early in our mission um, to have kind of had a cap to say we can't rescue any more dogs, we can't rescue any more pigs or farm animals or anything like that, and I would have decided to move. But I do want to say, um, you know, Estacada treated us really good, and I'm really grateful for the people that we met there. I'm grateful for just the whole experience. Um, the thing is, it was a difficult one, you know? It was a difficult experience. Going into it, I was a bit naive, you know, I was really, I was really excited and I, I didn't know the road ahead of me. Looking back at it, um, you know, I remember having a few people in animal rescue come to visit me and they loved how, you know, optimistic I was, how much energy I had about animal rescue and, and and uh, the sanctuary and all of my ideas and stuff like that. And I remember them being so impressed, but I remember someone saying, you know, you're really new to this. I'd love to see if you're still like this in a couple of years. And at the time, I think I was almost offended, but looking back at it, I do realize uh, what this woman meant because you, you, you go through some hard times and uh, you're, you're, you'd almost be insane not to question if if it's the right path for you, you know? And um, I never saw myself questioning that so much in my career, especially so early on, but I, uh, I stuck with it. We didn't only stick with it, we decided to make it even more difficult and go, uh, you know, 10 times, literally 10 times the acreage, uh, 10 times the house, 10 times the responsibility. <laughs> so, um, isn't that right, Penny? Isn't that right, Pen Pens? Is that right, my little Penny Pens? You love it here now, huh? You just love it. You love it. Yes, you do. You love it. She just loves it. Um, but, you know, I, I will say one of the hardest things about leaving that sanctuary was my happy place and my happy place there was the river and I'll never forget you know when I was deciding you guys don't know this story but when I was contemplating if I should leave it was that river where I would swim and take the dogs every day it was that river that would make me feel like I shouldn't and uh, that river was my river it felt like it was for not just mine but the dogs it was our place and I remember being down there and I was walking the dogs down there one day 
and the dogs started going crazy. They started barking and they, they went down there and there was people there. And I was like, oh, I wasn't expecting anyone to be here. I thought maybe they were trespassing. And they had told me that they just moved, you know, right across the street and it was their river too. And they had a tent. And when I saw that tent and I saw these kids there, I felt like I had lost something very special to me. And I really felt like that was my answer. That was the universe. That was God. That was whatever it is that you think speaks to you. That was that voice that said, it's time for you to go. And, uh, because then at that point there was nothing else keeping me there. Once, once that river didn't just belong to the dogs and myself anymore. Um, that was the answer that I needed. It, it was time to leave. And, um, I put my, my heart and my soul into finding something that I loved uh, just as much or more. And I'm really, really beyond, beyond grateful to tell you guys that I found that place. And the place that I found is the type of place where I can actually share with you one day. Um, it's going to be a, a beautiful journey to get it to where it needs to be before we can start having tours and stuff like that. Um, but I can tell you that, that that's going to happen one day. And at that place, it could never have happened because I had no privacy. Pulling up to, you know, to the sanctuary, my home was right there in Estacada. And I, I felt at times, you know, some really unfortunate things happen where, you know, my privacy was violated and I, I, I wasn't comfortable there anymore. And once I lost the privacy of having the river, there was really nothing else, you know, keeping me there. And although I do love it, and it's such a beautiful, beautiful, special place. Um, it just no longer felt like home. And uh, yeah, I f there's a part of me, as I say this to you, I, I do feel a little bit guilty because I have so much love for that place. And I remember how I felt the first time I saw it. The thing is, is that I did do what I said I would do there, you know? And I, I am proud of that. I wish I did a lot of things differently. I wish I, I, I wish I did a lot of things differently. And I'll, I'll tell you what those things are one day. I think this video is already long enough. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, I don't know if happy, that might be exaggerated, but I'm, I'm, I feel good about, you know, sharing my mistakes with you. A, so that you know I'm human and I make way more mistakes than I do as far as making good decisions. I just don't repeat those mistakes. And I also want to share my mistakes with you. So, you know, you guys don't make them, but I made a lot of mistakes there. And um, I unfortunately, you know, it's never good to regret, but I regret a lot of the decisions that I made there. And this is a new chapter for the animals. It's a new chapter for me. And I, I'm very, very, very happy to be here. I'm very, very happy to continue on, you know, what I, what I did there to continue it on here, but at such a bigger level on such a bigger scale. And I really think that you guys are going to be so thrilled and so proud and so happy to see what we do here. If you were at all, excuse me, if you were at all impressed with what, with what the Asher house did in Estacada in just, you know, less than a year and a half, um, then I assure you those feelings will quadruple with what you, w w when you see what we do here. Um, it's been such a, it's been such a journey. I, I can't put it into words reflecting back on, I remember the first time I saw that place and you know what it meant to me. And I, I didn't realize it was just the first step of, of, you know, what our actual sanctuary would, would be like. So I am grateful for every second that happened there. I learned a lot. You know, I, I wish a lot didn't happen, but I, I don't think, I, I can't help but think it wouldn't have brought me to where I am today, which is here, which is really where we're supposed to be. You know, there's no, there's no excuses here. Like what we can do here is uh, is just so beautiful. And I can't wait to show you 
literally every step of the way. Because the truth is, is that none of this would, would even be possible without you guys. You know, none of it would be possible without the people who want it to happen, nor would it be possible without the people who don't want it to happen. Because those are the people who get us back in line and, and you know, make sure we're doing everything right. So I'm grateful for really everybody, both the, 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 the optimistics and the pessimistics along the journey have truly led me to where we are today. And I could say without hesitation, although I've made a lot of mistakes, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else in the world, guys. There is nowhere else I'd want my animals to be. And there's nowhere else I would want to be to continue this mission, really. So thank you. And uh, to everyone in Estacada who helped us, I just want to say again, thank you uh, deeply. Um, and also thank you for putting up with me because um, I know that um, I, I went into it all just completely blind and I, I really learned so much from so many people. Um, and it really means a lot to me. So thank you all. All right.